Chat, how would you rate Cake's program programming skill out of 10? I think I would rate myself as a 6 out of 10, my programming skills. Yeah, I think 6 is good. Like, I've been 4 years in the programming space. I think 6 is a... I'm, not no, I'm no longer a beginner. And I'm no expert. And so I, I've got to be somewhere in the middle between the two. Have you guys ever uh, seen the programming curve? Where is this? Have you guys ever seen this? Let me show you. What is this? Uh, programming curve. Madness. What's this? What's this? Images. Where the fuck is that? Programming curve. Programming learning curve. It's something similar to this, but it's not this curve, I think. Is it this? Dunning-Kruger curve? Valley of Despair? Despair? It's not the Dunning-Kruger curve, but it's this curve, yes. I think it's... But it's not about Dunning-Kruger, it's about programming in relation to programming. Is it this one here? Oh! There it is. Uh, there I thought I found it. Have you guys ever seen this? Where do you think you are on this curve? So you're you're talking about in this case we're talking about programming, but this can be applied to anything. This right here is when I started streaming and quit my job. So this the first part here. This is after one year of learning C. And making game engines in C++. And then ultimately finishing Pong. And starting my very first game that I wanted to sell. A tower defense game. Which I'm currently still working on. This little bad boy right here. And um, at that point. I was. I think. I think I was two months into the project. And I thought. That by the end of the sixth month. Starting from here. So six months, six months after this point, I would be able to finish my game. And um, there was peak of Mount Stupid for me. I quit my job. I started streaming and I was like, okay, in six months, I'm going to have my game. Uh, six months later, I'm like somewhere here. I don't think I'm in the Valley of Despair yet, but I'm somewhere here. It was I was on a decline. You know why? New material. What that means is... I figured out a new way to make a C++ engine in C, uh, yeah, to make a C++ engine that was much easier to handle than my previous engine that I learned before. The previous engine was too rigid. So this right here, <laughs> I was still happy. This is when I started reworking my entire engine, my Vulkan rendering engine. And that took like one or two months. Yeah. So guys, where do you think you are on this curve? This is just a Dunning-Kruger effect. But I think it works out. I think here this peak of Mount Stupid is when you realize you learned a little bit. And you can see what is in front of you. You think you know stuff. Because you maybe had someone teach you some really cool concepts. And you're like, damn, I already know so much. I'm much smarter than everyone else. Perpetually in Valley of Despair. I'm in Valley of Despair. I'm probably at 20,000 hours. Valley of Stupidity. Plateau of Stupidity. <laughs> Cakes, you are at Mount Stupid on your take about modern C++. <laughs> okay, fine. So if you say that, right? If you let's say you wait, let's say I'm wrong. Okay, I, I'm open to being wrong. True. Okay, I can be wrong. Then why is Travis Roman saying the same thing? What? Cause he's wrong as well. N equals two. <laughs> he's N equals two. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you have a point there. True. Dude, no way. A six 
7.5 out of 10 at least. Asartek, my man. Wait, you're on YouTube? You were, you, were, you were on Twitch a long time ago. Man, volume is tricky because there is a peak volume. Highest number is the way. An average volume. Appeal to authority. Travis is also at Mount Stupid. <laughs> I see. I'm gonna tell him that next time. So, like, what I think. So, basically, this is what happens over... I think this new material here, this is like one year, one and a couple of months in to learning C++ and game development in C++. And then Valley of Despair. This is when I learned new game mechanics, new engine mechanics, sound, input, graphics, OpenGL transition, uh, hot reloading in C++. I heard that. <laughs> there he is. Aha, uh -huh, I see. Sub, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's using Qi. He chose it. You are at this weird place using C++, but it's 20% potential. Okay, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Faster doesn't mean better, you know. Faster in the beginning doesn't mean better. Someone's gonna get beat up. So I went through this valley of despair, and I think this entire period for me actually took me two years from here to here i think this entire part two years because in the during the lowest point on my valley of despair if i reworked my engine from here to here tricky part i learned something new again and then by the time i got here i reworked my engine again that was the open gl rework and then after that I actually, it actually got better. And I started to see stuff for what it is. I started to appreciate engines again. I started to see that there are some C++ features that are good. I started to see that maybe some libraries could be good to use. You know, Mount Stupid was, you should do everything yourself. Everything has to be written from scratch. PNG file loading, true type font file loading. I need to write my own MP3 parser. MP4 parsing shouldn't be too difficult. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. All right, so I, I've been there. All right. And so this is when I learned that um, maybe, maybe you shouldn't be doing everything yourself. And so I think I'm here somewhere on the slope of enlightenment. If this is 10,000 hours, I think I'm at 4,000 hours. So somewhere here. It's going up. Your wave parser is shit. What are you talking about? My wave file parser is not universal. My wave file parser accommodates or solves the problem that I have of a very specific format being needed for my engine. And I don't need to write a better wave file parser for my engine because I'm not going to load in different types of wave files. So I don't need to spend the time and effort to make it more generic because ultimately it will not change the game in a meaningful way because the act of loading a wave file and ultimately playing that wave file has already been solved so i can already load and play sounds on a loop fade them in and fade them out there's no point in wasting any time on making this wave file parser any better see what i mean here like i don't need to do that i can do that i've had that in the past it's not actually that difficult Real talk, it's easier to properly support different audio types instead of hacking it together. It's trash though. It's not. 10k hours is only 5 years of 4 hour works. Is it though? Let's see. So calculator. 10,000 hours. Okay. So what we have is, I think it was 165 hours per month in a 40 hour job. This is what... I think it was 165. If I'm wrong here, correct me. But this is what employees... No, wait. Is it employees or employee? Wait. Employees? Employer. I think employer is the person that employs people. And employees are the ones that work there. So employers. I'm talking about the people that hire others. 173? Was it 173? It could be that. So let's say 173. That is per month. Let's say we have 12 months. Okay? Times 12. That is 2,000 hours a year. So if you, yeah, that actually, that adds up 
times five. That's ten thousand hours. After f I think it's not long enough though. I think you need ten years to master something. I think five years is not long enough. I think you need at least ten. I've been working as a dev for 24 years. You have? Wow, that's a long time, bro. There will be multiple Mount Stupids, but the following Valleys of Despair will feel less and less severe as you realize you can't know everything. Yes, main return zero, that's true. You realize that you are going to focus on this one particular thing and you have to let other things be done somewhere else. 41,000 hours here. Wait, you have that many hours in what? Coding? Or making music. What are you talking about? You are light years away from the plateau of productivity. Wrong. You're so wrong. It's insane. Adding a new hero into my game. Adding a new ability into my game. One ability a day. Easy. I prove it to you. I'm making your ability tomorrow. I will make a new... Hold me accountable to that. Uh, tomorrow is Friday. We'll make a new ability. I actually need to make a new ability for the defender. We're making a new ability for this guy right here. You're wrong. You're wrong. I'm very productive. I just need to figure out good abilities for this guy. That's more difficult than actually coding it. Coding it is like a couple of hours. Hours is a bad metric because you can put 10,000 hours and still be shit. Yes. See, like, if you work, let's say, 10 hours a day... The hours you put in are not as productive and learning intensive as if you work, let's say, two hours or three hours a day, then take a break and maybe two or three hours a block after that too. Because you are, you're, you're, you're basically, your learning curve, it drops down. Yeah, I, I notice this every day when I reach like three hours after I've done three hours of exclusive coding and problem solving, my ability to read the code and see errors and find solutions just degrades. And you ultimately write less code and make worse decisions. So it's smarter to have shorter bursts of very high productivity. 10, year, 10 years or 4 hour weeks, does that mean 40 years of cakes? 10 hour week, week? Okay, bro. Yeah, I'm pro not programming much at the moment. And it's about the quality, not the quantity. Okay, brother? <laughs> 